All right. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Oe. Welcome back to Seabed. Last time. Whew. Okay. Here I was thinking, you know, okay, it's pretty. Uh, hello, T. Welcome to the stream. Here I was thinking, okay, it's pretty obvious that Narasaki is an alternate personality of Sajiko that she created out of her grief, but that doesn't explain all of Narasaki's crazy powers. Like, for one, she's literally calling her, like, from from an, from an, a train station miles away. How is she able to do that if she's merely an alternate personality? Two, she said she worked at the hospital where uh, Takako is, which Narasaka, which uh, Sachiko had no idea about. And we saw that hospital far b long before... Asajiko ever saw that building. So, and through, like, what also, what's going on with the tips? Like, what world does that take place in? Is that Narasaki's past before she got to this current Sajiko? Like, there's so many questions. I am just like, 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 she has all these crazy abilities. Like, she can go into people's minds and, like, give people a choice on where to live in, like, a different dimensional le mental level, like, and leave her body as, like, a husk that apparently nobody will notice the difference. <laughs> Which is pretty hilarious. It's, like, I gotta admit, like, like, walking around as, like, literally a soulless being while you're chilling out in some alternate d dimension with, with your hot waifu, but... In, re in in the in the world you came from it's just like an empty body that everyone just accepts <laughs> I that's, I don't know how particularly close uh, Sajiko is with her family but she does have responsibilities at work but then again Takako I I love these two so much. I don't know. Takako reminds me a lot of the person I'm married to. Just in so many ways. <laughs> Hilarious, Guppy Force. That's true. Welcome to the stream. Sachiko could be a gauntlet knight. But even, like, Mio and Meow couldn't be in two different places at the same time. Oh my god, and like, because it just, I just want them to be together in the end, really. I don't know. I, yeah, again, this story is affecting me more than most because, again, Takako reminds me a lot of the person I'm married to, so. And it's because Sachiko and I, you know, we share some traits, so. It's affecting me more than probably would most people. <laughs> They're, they're just the light of my life, and just like it seems Takako is or was to Sachiko, and now I'm crying for no fucking reason again. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Without even starting the goddamn story! <laughs> oh. Anyway. Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand what you mean, blue shifting, but welcome to the stream. Uh, oh yeah, now we've switched back to Takako. I hope she can get out of this world and get to Sachiko. Get back into it. The final entry. There was a date at the top of the page I opened up the diary to. Before reading the entry, I flipped a few pages forward. The text ended after two pages. Uh oh. All I could see were the empty ruled lines. No matter how far I went, oh no. I returned to the page with the date. 
There were no other dates to following two pages, which made this the final entry. <sighs> November 3rd, 1975. We were playing in the park behind Takako's apartment when she found the carcass of a turtle. <laughs> she said it was a turtle that used to be hers. She got it during one of the town fairs and kept it in a big styrofoam box. I did recall there being a box like that on her balcony. It stood slightly tilted to the side to create different areas. One with water, another with sand. The area with water was covered in green moss, and I occasionally spotted a goldfish swimming there too. Apparently the turtle used to live in there as well, but kept escaping the box all the time, although it always returned to it in the end. However, it had been six months since its last disappearance, and Takako seemed to have forgotten all about it until now. We dug a hole under the slide and buried the withered carcass in it, using an ice cream stick as a grave marker. <laughs> as we had no name to write on the stick, we simply went with Green Turtle. Oh. The discovery of the carcass left Takako heartbroken for a while. But she managed to cheer up eventually, and we played hide and seek together. Talk about nostalgia. Voicing the feelings I've always felt when reading this thing. I continued to the last page. <laughs> Only the two of us could have known what happened that day. So what I'm getting from this is that Takako's world may very well be the future of the Tips world. As such, only Sachiko, or someone Sachiko had entrusted with this information, could have written this diary. Takako was very good at hide and seek, so I could never find her. And whenever I gave up and started talking about going home, she would always sneak up behind me for a quick scare. I'm leaving. Oh, I'm leaving. I said that in the middle of the park in a loud voice, but nothing happened. Even after checking the tall grass where I expected her to be, to be hiding, I couldn't see any trace of her. I glanced up at the orange sky, genuinely considering just leaving, but deciding to look for her for a bit longer. I climbed all of the stairways of our apartment building. I checked all the booths in the public toilet of the park. I looked for her in the empty warehouse on the other side of the street. Most of the areas were locked, but I found a few doors that were open, so I had a peek. It was dark and smelled like dust inside. The entrance of the seventh warehouse container was open too. Takako was hiding in there. Damn, she is committed to hide and seek. That was the same area where Takako fell when we were playing tag on the roof of the warehouse. Ouch. I had the landlord who worked at a nearby Okonomiyaki restaurant unlock the door and let Takako out. It wasn't used for anything, so we did get scolded, but otherwise got off relatively easy. Takako was crouching in the corner of the room, with the orange light falling from the hole in the ceiling illuminating her vague silhouette. Found you. Let's go home. Uh-oh. Oh, could she still alive? Oh, thank God. Had she still remained crouched? Did she have, like, a, a, a scary experience? When I walked closer, I found her moaning and talking to herself. As I touched her shoulder, she let out a loud scream. Oh no! The timbre of her voice was so odd I couldn't even make out her words. 
But then realized she was asking me not to make a sound. Oh no! I figured I'd ask her if she wanted to call me, me to call her parents, but changed my mind. I stooped down in front of her, careful not to make a sound. Takako was sitting on the ground, hugging her knees. Something must have terrified her beyond imagination. Oh my god. Her eyes were narrowly opened, but had been fixed on nothing. Her mouth trembled as she kept mumbling something. I reached out and covered her ears. I could feel her face flushing through my palms. As we sat like that for a while, her shaking began to gradually subside. She breathed heavily for a while, but that too eventually stopped. My hands were growing numb, but when I slightly moved them, she abruptly spoke up. Did you say something? I asked her in a low voice. She didn't scream this time, and seemed relatively calm. This music is not fitting the situation. You want me to call someone? Don't go anywhere. I can still hear it. She said in her normal voice. Oh my god! What kind of creature did she see? Oh my god. Can you stay until it passes? Sure. I answered. Oh my god. Takako, what happened to you? What did you see? Here we go. We're now we're getting somewhere. I've been Oh, I finished the diary and laid down in the bed, facing the ceiling. That's right. I knew it. Mayuko did the exact same thing. Sachiko did when my ears started ringing. Maybe she was actually Sachiko. That vague idea had been in the back of my mind for a while now. If she was the one who wrote that diary. It made perfect sense that that parcel came with it. That, that came with it had no return address. But why would she do that? Why was this happening? No matter how hard I thought about it, I couldn't come up with an answer. I felt like I'd been forgetting something important. Or perhaps it was just my memory devouring illness acting up again. A headache assaulted me when I tried to focus on that corner of my mind. I shook my head and answered mindedly look around the room. I remember what I saw in Kozui's room. That was definitely Sachiko in that dark cave-like place. You two, you have a special connection. Your dreams are connected somehow. Oh God, I hope... I hope Sachiko can pull you through to her world. I only saw her from behind, but I would recognize her anywhere. But she had long hair. Well, my is was relatively short, which meant they were two different people after all. The more I thought about it, the more confused I got. <sighs> I let out a sigh. I closed my eyes and tried to remember Sajiko's face in that darkness. But the area around her eyes remained dark, so I couldn't visualize her that well. At this point, I felt like it might have been a hallucination that my mind had created in response to my wish to see her again. What kind of monster did Takako see? Oh my god. I opened my eyes, picked up the notebook, and looked at the trace left by the pages that had been torn, having been torn out. That's true. Narasaki tore out the pages. Takako's world is the future. 
of the tips world. And that falls right in line with Narasaki saying that she used to work there. It didn't particularly stand out, but it wasn't insignificant either. Maybe Narasaki is good. Maybe she's trying to get them back together. I would like to believe that. That would be great. It didn't particularly stand out, but it wasn't insignificant either. I got curious about what they contained, even more so than before. Maybe Narasaki has been working really hard to get them back together, even though it seems impossible due to the difference in worlds. I hope that's true. Maybe they could have helped me discover who wrote the notebook. It had to be Sajiko. There were too many things at this sanatorium I couldn't understand. My illness, Sajiko, the phenomenon in that dark room. I hoped the notebook would provide some answers, but all it did was leave me with more questions. I gave up on thinking and shoved all these thoughts into a mental drawer. No! Okay, good. I began flipping through the notebook's pages again, looking at the dates. Some I had forgotten, while others were completely unfamiliar to me. But the moment I saw them, they'd reappear in my mind as a memory, as though that was what they were supposed to be all along. Oh my god, that is so sweet. As I traced my fingers along the letters of the text, I felt an odd kind of warmth travel from my fingertips all the way to my head. It was a pleasant feeling all in all. <sighs> the warmth made my eyes shed hot tears. Oh God. <sighs> After I calmed down a bit and sat up, I felt pain in my shoulders. They must have gotten stiff after staying in the same position for too long. I climbed out of bed and stretched my limbs. Then I left the room and took a stroll around the sanatorium. The orange rays of the evening sun illuminated the corridor. Wow, is it serendipitous or, or what that I gave her a voice very similar to Sachiko? <laughs> Good afternoon, Takako. I turned around to see Mayuko behind me. What were you doing today? You haven't asked me to do anything, so I was reading the diary in my room. Mayuko's eyes shifted to the notebook in my hand. I see. I feel like reading that thing is all you've been doing lately. Oh, I actually finished it just earlier. Mayuko's gaze returned to me. I could feel the warmth of the orange-tinted sunlight on my skin. Did you find anything out? Mayuko asked. It helped me remember a lot of things. I feel like I have a better understanding of what kind of person I am. Well, that's lovely. If I was to liken my mind to my body, I felt as though a missing, missing limb had just been reattached. Letting me move more freely. On the other hand, the limbs that were still missing stood out all the more. And now I feel lonelier than before. In what way exactly? Showered by the light, Mayuko made a faint smile.
For example, you remember to look at the room you stayed at during the school trip. But not the lobby of the hotel, right? You tend to forget things that don't matter much. And even the fun memories are not necessarily replicated fully in your head. When you try to remember some of the details, you find that you simply can't. Well, that's the kind of... Oh, God damn it! This was Takako fucking hell! For example, you remember the look of the room you stayed at during the school trip, but not the lobby of the hotel, right? You tend to forget things that don't matter much. And even the fun memories are not necessarily replicated fully in your head. When you try to remember some of the details, you find that you simply can't. Well, it's the kind of loneliness I feel right now. <sighs> Mayako seemed like she had trouble following what I was going on about, but let out a thoughtful moan to indicate she was paying attention. Perhaps you can't understand that feeling until you become an adult. I'm more of an adult than you. Aren't you simply going through a sentiment? Okay. Perhaps... Perhaps you can't understand that feeling until you become an adult. I'm more of an adult than you. Aren't you simply going through a sentimental episode? Maybe. But I still feel like this kind of feeling gets stronger as you grow older. Oh, I see. That's possible. Mayuko's eyes wandered back to the notebook in my hands. I'd love to read that too. Would it be okay for me to borrow it? I held up the notebook. I looked at Mayuko's face, then at the notebook, then back to Mayuko. You can have it if you want, but aren't you normally busy with getting dinner ready around this time? That's right. In that case, I'll leave it one of the, on one of the shelves in the night duty room. All right. Thank you. I nodded. See you later then. Mayuko continued to the kitchen. In the end, I couldn't ask her about the diary. Mayuko said she'd never seen it before. So she really was the one who wrote it? There had to be a huge and very serious reason as to why she'd go through so much trouble to cover her tracks. I love that Takako is now actively questioning what's going on. I really love that. I walked down the moonlit corridor, looking at the dim red glow of the emergency lights. I could hear the metal plate strike the wooden pole outside. Light escaped through the gaps of Selenai's door. I gave it a light knock and received a quiet response. Stepping inside, I saw Selenai reading a book in the table lamp's light. Not going to sleep yet? I wasn't feeling sleepy, so I decided to read. What about you? Same here, except I was out for a walk. As I sat down in the cane chair by her bed, I heard a weird high-pitched sound from outside that reminded me of a flute. Wow, with no context, you are going to be completely lost. Okay. I've been hearing this in a lot in my room lately. Do you think it's a bird? It's Nue. What? Hojo Nue? The Toho character. Unident undefined fantastic object. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> 
New egg? It's a small bird, also known as a scaly thrush. I made a gesture to show its rough size with my palm. They sound like a whistle. It's kind of creepy. But it instantly comes better when you realize it's a cute bird, no? I suppose so. Sane smiled. Aren't you scared to take a walk alone at night? She added. Nah, it's more exciting than during, during the day. I imagine you walk past everyone's rooms. Maybe. I bet the ghost stories we have heard all originate from you. Not all. What do you mean? Sana needed her brows. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, there's yesterday's jelly in the refrigerator. Can I have it? I opened the small fridge by my free feet, finding a single plastic package of tangerine jelly on the top shelf. Jelly? You're just gonna eat plain jelly? W without like any bread or anything? Taco coat? My god. <laughs> it's incredible how you can keep that figure while just eating jelly straight out of a can, out of the jar. Jeez. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks. I peeled off the seal with a picture of tangerine on it, took the little wooden spoon from package and began eating the orange jelly. Wait, they just sell jelly in packs? This is some crazy ass world line. Jeez. Without any kind of bread to spread it on or anything? Or cracker to spread it on? What do you mean, American words? Is this another freaking uh, chips situation? Oh, wait. Oh, this is Jello. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Okay, now, okay, this is Jello, not jelly. Okay, that makes. This is another chips situation. Okay. Where you guys use two, the same word for two completely different things. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was cool and had the sweet sour taste characteristic of citrus fruits. You want some? If I eat this stuff at night, it'll only make my stomach feel all cold. <sighs> I put a spoonful of jelly in my mouth. Let's put on some music. Maiko won't like it. You think she'd run all the way to your room with complaints? <laughs> Now that I think about it, we don't have a single TV in this place. Yeah, now that you mention it, not like it's something I choose. It's amazing you can get... I would be bored shitless in the 80s or 90s without a TV. Like, nowadays, we, we just use the TV, TV to broadcast from the internet. Like, I haven't watched regular TV, I don't think, in several years. I just broadcast shit from, like, Netflix and, like and other sites on the internet on it. But uh, in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, TV was absolutely freaking essential. That's incredible. Aren't you worried we might be missing some vital news or something? About kind, for example. 
I don't know, there could be a deadly viral outbreak, a war, or something like that. I looked at the ceiling and cocked my head. Like a giant monster appearing our t approaching our town, or something. Oh, you've watched too much Godzilla. I know, but it's so cool. Son, I chuckled. That kind of monster. Uh, humanoid, 15 meter tall anteater that uses its snout to stuff people straight into its belly through the windows of their houses. Hello, Void Dweller. Void Dweller, you gotta catch up from the beginning. Some crazy shit is happening. Welcome to the stream, by the way. I made the shadow of an anteater with my fingers in the dim light. Rah! Oh wow, Shin Godzilla is like the horror movie version of Godzilla. Damn. That was pretty good. It's like, um... I always thought of Shin Godzilla as uh, Destroyer kind of cosplaying as Godzilla. Because they're basically the same monster but in different shapes. And, you know, done a lot better in Shin Godzilla. I just, uh... The, uh... Yep, I'm also thinking of the Gen 5 Pokemon. Yep. Heat more. Yep, definitely. I personally love the Heisei series. That was the one I... I kind of grew up with as a kid. I love, don't get me wrong, I love Showa. Like, that's what I watched first, but when I was like uh, 10 or 12, slowly but surely the Heisei series began, uh, uh, you know, being released. And I just, I, I loved how they had continuity between each movie and like, no, just I mean, if you're interested in watching Godzilla, never, ever, ever, ever watch the dub version. I say this as someone who loves dubs in anime. Trust me. Godzilla dubs are legendary for being absolutely awful, beyond comprehension. You, you, you just don't do it. Even the more recent ones, just don't. Just, just don't do it. Don't do it. Seriously, don't do it. It's, it sounds so awkward. Like, please just, if you're gonna watch Godzilla, watch it subbed, I'm begging you. Godzilla was kind of my first fandom, actually. So yeah, I'm totally nerding out about that. <laughs> I will take any opportunity. Back when we got our first PC in 1995, the very first thing I searched up was Godzilla. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't our first PC, it was uh, our second PC, but it was our first one with the internet. With AOL. <laughs> See, that's not completely true, Void Dweller. I love anime dubs. I love a lot of them. But live action dub is something that should never, ever, ever be done. Ever. And Godzilla dubs especially are just horrible. A lot of anime dubs are really nice that I like. There are definitely the bad ones that exist. Not going to deny that, but if there was a choice, if, if there was a dub that wasn't awful of an anime, I'd always watch the dub version just so I can, you know, sometimes hear what they're saying and take my eyes off the screen for two seconds. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Get off on a big tangent there. I'm going to be too afraid to go to sleep. Well, we might be in severe danger if we miss an often on TV, telling us to keep the lights off and not make a sound. Why would you dub live action? What kind of cruel person would dub live action? That, it just sounds so horribly awkward. Like, there's never a single moment where you don't realize you're watching something that's dubbed. Like, it's just, 
in live action. It just sounds terrible. When the, the actor, it's mainly because the actor's lips are not matching the words. I just can't sit through a live action dub. I just can't. Anyway, back to the story. Sana glanced at the window. These kinds of things always have just appeared in front of the window without warning. Then you've got to run around and barricade yourself in the bathroom. Trapping us in a confined space in horror movies is basically suicide. I don't think I've ever seen anyone survive that. I hope this horror discussion isn't le leading to... something that's about to happen to them. Oh god. The moment the character begins praying, you know they're dead. There was this one movie with worms that traumatized me. The one where they, the one where they travel through pipes. That's the one! There was another movie where they had to send a close-up of a freaky alien's face out of nowhere. I almost got a heart attack. That's the one about the alien that can spit into particles and reform, right? Yes, I'm surprised you know that. Oh, they're geeking out! This is, this is great! I used to watch a lot of movies. Is there anything else that scared you? Huh. T-Rexes. Really? Oh, okay. That was both of them. Oh, they're making friends. We pretty much said that at the same time. See, now that's the opposite of me. I love dinosaurs. Whenever the T-Rex came on screen, I was like, hell yeah! I love dinosaurs to pieces. I went out of my way as, uh, you know, in when I was in the single digits of age to seek out every possible movie with dinosaurs there ever was. Anything that had dinosaurs was an instant watch for me. I eat, I, I eat breathed, and slept dinosaurs everywhere. Pretty much a dinosaur fanatic. And Jurassic Park came, the, the original, came out in the middle of my dinosaur obsession. So everybody in, in school turned to me. I was like, oh my god, Collider. <laughs> this is your movie. And I'm like, yes, I know! <gasps> and my parents, my mom actually had read the novel with me the year before. So it was like, oh my god! <laughs> like, I wish this was a movie, and then it became a movie! <laughs> I can't wait to why I decided to take shelter in there, but why just keep sitting without doing anything? <laughs> oh my god, are they talking about Jurassic Park? I guess the writers figured it'd be more fun that way. I suppose so. I yawned. A whiff of wind blew into the room just through the partially open window. I narrowed my eyes to see the moon blur and elongate in the distance. Not planning to go to bed yet? I guess I'm starting to feel pretty sleepy. Oh, I reversed them there. God damn it. Though my legs still felt heavy as, I, as lead, I mustered enough strength to stand up. Oh my god, Jishan, every year my parents took me to the Natural History Museum in New York. We love that. We love that thing. <laughs> oh my god, I love the dinosaur and the space sections. Those were fantastic. Good night. Night. I continued the egg to the exit of the room with uncertain steps. See you tomorrow, said Sana as I opened the door. 
Yeah, see ya. Thanks for the jelly. Jello. <laughs> There's Kalada being an American. <laughs> I returned to my room and threw myself on the weight bed. I wrapped the sheet around myself like a cocoon, letting my consciousness slowly melt into the world of dreams. I dreamed of seeing a 15 meter high humanoid anteater by my window that made me panic and locked myself in the bathroom. Oh my God. I considered falling back asleep when, my, when I opened my eyes. But the sun peeking through a gap in my curtain shone right into my face. No amount of twisting on the bed let me escape the brightness through my eyelids. And when I finally gave up and climbed out of bed to close the curtains, I realized I wasn't that sleepy anymore. I parted the curtains instead. A snow-laden mountain loomed beyond the window. Now what is Cozeway Steel? She's in both worlds. How is that possible? What is the true nature of Takako's world? Like, did Sajiko's mind connect to this world? Hey, itty bitty Burncastle. I spotted Cozeway standing in front of the door leading to the inner yard. What's up? I can't leave. Because we turned the doorknob, but the door didn't budge. What are you doing here? I came to see the snow. Well, too bad. The door doesn't open. Okay, girl Squidward. Let's see if old Chakako's strength can't do it. I rolled up my sleeves. Just give me a moment with him. Cosway took a step back as I seized the doorknob. It should be Void Dweller, I, 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 isn't it usually? Visible after, I think it takes a while to get through, but it should be visible. Like it always is. Huh? Ah! Hell yeah! Remember, I work out! A loud crack reverberated in the room. You've broken it. It's not broken. I have to tell Mariko about this. No! Please don't tell Mariko! I'm telling. No, 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 no! <laughs> hey, wait, don't do that! Through the window, I could see a pile of snow that would reach up to my knees right outside the door. Well, right outside the door wasn't particularly accurate, as it covered the entire inner yard. Only the big camphor tree still t towered high above it all, boasting an elegant right layer of snow on top. I guess I'll try the window. I undid the latch and opened the window only to be momentarily blinded by the brightness of the snow. Yep, I remember that happening too. That's one thing that you won't find in Brisbane. <laughs> snow. Stepping on the windowsill, I jumped outside. Takako, you're not even prepared to go in the snow. Won't you be freezing cold? Oh God. 
My legs sank, sank into the snow below. Whoa, I'm sinking here. I was about to jump back inside, but Kozo I walked in front of the window before I knew it, blocking my way. Open the door. I need a shovel to clear this much snow away. You have your hands, don't you? <laughs> burn castle's gonna burn. Are you kidding me? Look, my legs are already freezing, okay? Hey, I'm not the one who jumped into snow without thinking. <laughs> Mayako appeared behind Kozui in the corridor. What are you two doing? Oh, we're playing with snow. Good. <laughs> Mayuko handed me a shovel through the window. I was looking for you to help me sho with shoveling the snow. And I just so happened to be looking for a shovel, too. Shoveling snow, that is one thing I definitely do not miss from America. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I do not miss that in the least. My parents are much older now, so they just hire somebody to do it. But when we were younger, um, she, uh, she referring to my mom, paid my sister and me uh, to uh, shovel the driveway. And then when we moved into the, a bigger house, it got a lot harder. <laughs> I stuck the shovel into the snow. <laughs> I lifted up a shovel full of snow and placed it into the cart behind me. Kozui appeared as well, pushing an empty cart toward me. She stopped the empty cart next to me, moved to the snow-filled one, and pushed it away. I continued to shovel snow until Kozui returned with the next cart. Seeing that my car was at least still partially filled with snow, she rattled her own. Jeez, give me a break. I have some business in the library. Go on ahead then. I can shovel snow all by myself. How on earth am I supposed to go? <laughs> oh my god. away, you're too adorable. <laughs> I gotta love. I, I gotta say, I love Kozue bringing the sass wherever she goes. <laughs> Kozue made an indignant expression. Her legs were shorter than mine by at least one hand's length. I cleared half of the way already. It won't take that long. If you start taking breaks, it'll take until noon. Chop, chop. Oh, where'd you get a whip? I found it in Francisca's closet. I don't know. Ow! Oh! <laughs> Kozui rattled her cart again. Jeez, don't you trust me at all? I trust you about as much as I trust the paper used for goldfish scooping. <laughs> oh my god! Huh. Where are you bringing that snow anyway? Over there, where Mayuko told me. Mayuko appeared on the cleared up road as we talked. I brought you some coffee. Thanks. And some hot milk for you, Kozue. Hey, why can't I have coffee? Kozui took a paper cup from Mayoko. Um, where's Sanai? She seems to have woken up with a bit of a fever this morning. She's resting in her room right now. 
It was freezing this morning. Is she okay? It didn't look like anything serious. I finished my coffee and handed the paper cup back to Mayuko. You know, Void Dweller, I was told that all the time, but I didn't like coffee because of the taste. And I ended up to be five foot fucking eight. I'm too tall. I should have drank more coffee when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, when I was little, I didn't like the taste of coffee. Just like I didn't like the taste of eggs until I got older. But it was too late. I had already grown too tall. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh yeah, just listen to this, Mayuko. Kozui said she only trusted me as much as the paper used for goldfish scooping. Now who's the tattletale? I once caught five goldfish with a single one. There was actually this one time I almost caught 20. 20? That sounds far too fishy. Is it really true? I'm not lying! Uh, anyway, that's not what I was trying to say. Oh, wow. That is so cool, blue shifting. Can you hurry up and shovel the snow already? More time talking means less time in the library. Chop, chop. Ow! Hey, Mayako, aren't you gonna say anything? Oh, I'm sorry, my judge friend said I should allow it. Uh... <laughs> Kozui egged me on after handing her cup back to Mayako. With two cups in hand, Mayako turned around and continued to the entrance. Besides, it kind of turns me on. Oh, come on! I found some ice on the roof, so I'll go, go and try to shatter it for now. Let's take a bath together after we finish with the snow. Now you're fucking talking! Sounds great. As I resume work, I suddenly realize something and turn to Kozui. Oh god, boy dweller. I wish I was just three inches shorter. Like... Seriously, that would be great. Wait a minute. You can use the connecting corridor to go to the library, right? MVP. <laughs> Borrowing the keys is too much of a pain. Seriously? 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 The door's hinge hinges squeaked as I turned it, as I closed it behind me upon entering the silent lobby. I could hear the rustling of trees and the chirping of birds from outside. The light filtering in through the stained glass above the door lit up the floor. I continued forward, glancing at the astronomical trinket on the counter. The planet imitations were slowly spinning in the barely perceptible breeze. Oh, it's that thing. I see it right there. Oh god, Jitan, no, I've gained a lot of weight recently. I need to get back to exercising. Oh god. Oh, Jitan. I need to exercise more cuz oh my god. Jeez. The contraption suddenly let out a high-pitched bell-like sound. 
I let out, I heard a sound of footsteps, and then Mayuko appeared from the stairs leading to the underground bath. Have you finished? Where should I leave this? I held up the shovel in front of her. I took it from the storage room on the second floor. As for the cart, you can leave it in the inner yard. The cart is right for the exit now. I see. All right. I'll go return your shovel to its place. Um, where's Cozaway? Where's Cozaway? Asked my as I was about to climb the staircase. She's probably in the library. Oh, yeah. She went to borrow some book from the library. I don't think she'll take too long. I'm done preparing the bath, so find a change of clothes and come back. Okay. I ascended the stairs with shovel in hand. Just call me Shovel Knight. From behind, I could hear Mayuko walking to the door. The storage room was located in an extra area between the stairs and the first room on the second floor. Its narrow confines had a large painting in a fancy frame that no one could figure out where to hang. It was a painting of a blonde-haired witch uh, who was smiling in a very interesting way. <laughs> a sofa with a missing leg, an aquarium for tropical fish, and all sorts of otherwise completely unrelated bits and bobs. In the dark room illuminated by a single source of light, I found a stand similar to the one used for umbrellas. I promptly stuck the shovel into it. So long, partner, till we meet again. I turned off the light and started down the way I came from, but paused in the middle of the corridor. On my right was Cozaway's old room. Uh oh, is she gonna is she gonna try to warp again? Let's see. Into the dream world. I placed my hand on the doorknob and slowly pushed the door open. There was only a bed, an empty cabinet, and a closed window inside. It hadn't changed at all since I'd last seen it. I could see the sky above the port town through the window. I wonder if this is Sachiko's old room. When Sachiko stayed here in the tips. The light through said window illuminated the room, unconcerned that its master was gone. Holy shit, Void Dweller, you still have a mile to walk to the bus stop? That's, in sh that's insane. Holy shit. I remember I, when I was in peak uh, uh, you know, physical fitness, I, I walked around, um, it was a 10 miles a day on the treadmill. But, uh, yeah, I, and my leg muscles got really big and it, it looks really weird, unfortunately, as a vestige of that because I, I didn't, wasn't able to do really any other, any other exercise, but I lost a lot of weight then. <laughs> I wonder if I could still do that. Probably not. <laughs> I stepped inside and heard the floor creak underneath me. Closed my eyes, but couldn't sense the hard rock and floor underneath my feet. The cold wind blowing through the walls of the narrow cave walls. The walls of the narrow cave walls. <laughs> the low humming that strangled my chest. Or even the smell of wet soil and moss. That is insane, Void Dweller. The bath's ready. A sudden voice from behind left me startled. I turned around to see Mayako with a puzzled expression on her face. What are you doing in a place like this? Nothing. 
not trying to go to another dimension or anything, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Why would I be thinking that? No reason! <sighs> My could let out a sigh. Let's go take that bath. I passed my Mayako. She followed behind me. Woo! I submerged myself in the hot water while resting my head on the edge of the tub. I could hear the sounds of Mayako washing her hair. I grasped the punk and toy floating in the tub, submerged it in the water, then let go while watching the ripples it created as it shot up. Kozue regarded me in silence. Oh, Kozue, you look really nice with your hair down. Once it began feeling warmer, I climbed out of the bath and sat on its edge. As I counted the number of punk and floating in the tub, Maiko finished washing her hair and placed her basket on the ground with a thud. I could hear wet footsteps as she walked towards the bath. The round yellow pumpkin sluggishly swayed in the calm water. Mayako submerged herself up to her shoulders and shifted her gaze to me. It was getting too hot. I slid down from the edge, leaving the cool air for the hot water. My skin warmed up instantly. I could feel the heat traveling through my neck to my head. If you cool yourself off at proper intervals, every time you return to the bath will feel as good as your first time. And you never get too hot, either. Really? I closed my eyes as my cheeks warmed up. You warm yourself in the bath and cool down sitting on the edge. Rinse and repeat. You manage the temperature of the outer layer of your skin. Heating and cooling it as though you were making a Miu Miu Fei I I I know that was a jeez, that was a song that there was a there was a meme that uh, Lapland was singing in uh, Ark Nights and I think that was the name of the song that she was singing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that's pronounced Miu Fei out of yourself. It's the elegant way of enjoying a bath. It's the elegant way of enjoying a bath. You're gonna catch a cold like that. Oh, I don't think you need to worry about that. Said Kozway as she stood up. Yeah, Koz Kozway knows that this is the healthy way to enjoy the bath. Wait a second! I know what you did there, Kozway. I exclaimed, raising my fist. Kozway! Are you leaving already? Kozui nodded at Mayuko's question and left the room. I don't want to be here whenever you two are doing whatever you're going to do. I have books to read. I spent a few moments gazing at the white paper colored windows when the cold drop of water fell on my forehead. You're going to get your hair wet. Mayako came over to me and tucked some loose locks of hair peeking out from beneath my towel under un back under it. Your face is red like a boiling octopus. I may have spent too much time in the water. I think it's about time you got out then. Would you like me to wash your back? Yay, of course! Think of it as my, of it as my thanks for shuffling the snow. <laughs> I guess hard work does pay off from time to time. Woo! <laughs> I 
I got out of the bathtub, splashing hot water all around me, and sat down on the closest wooden stool by the shower. Monica brought a stool of her own, sitting down on it behind me. get a little rough. Oh, I bet you do. Understood. Maya took over the washcloth and soap and pressed it against my back. She took hold of my shoulder with her other hand. Look, I know I said it should be rough, but I don't want it to hurt. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, the you I do is amazing! I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. She began slowly brushing my back up and down with just the right amount of strength. Does it hurt? No, it's just right. Feels good. Context is, 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 is a pretty amazing thing. <laughs> I see. I exhaled a breath, raised my knees, and rested my chin on them. Are you tired? No, it's not like that. It's no lever piled up this much back where I'm from, so if anything, shoveling it was. Oh, god damn it. Are you tired? No, it's not like that. Snow never piled up this much back where I'm from, so if anything, shoveling it was a nice new experience for me. Oh my god, blue shifting. That would be hilarious. Imagine someone new joining the stream right now. <laughs> I've never seen so much snow here in the past, to be honest. Guess I wouldn't have any more chances like that, huh? Yes, unfortunately. I see. Well, not like I'm the one concerned. Maya's hand paused as she considered my words for a moment. Do you have any itchy spots? You sound like a barber. What will you do if I say I do? I let out a laugh. <laughs> Don't blame me if you- OH MY GOD! <laughs> this is amazing! This is amazing! <laughs> Don't blame me if you won't sleep- be able to sleep on your back tonight. Have you ever said you have an itchy spot at a barber's? No. I have. Michael let out a gasp of surprise. You actually had them scratch your head? Hello, Dimitri. Welcome to the stream. Yeah. But then the rest of the experience didn't go too well. They totally rushed the dryer parts afterwards. I think they thought of me as an annoying customer and wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. I've always thought that it was more like a figure of speech than an actual proposal. But it feels good. I wanted them to do it again. I want you to do it again. Maybe later on we can we can drop all, all these pretenses and just get it on. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds amazing. Well, I suppose I can see what you mean. It feels good whenever another person scratches you. For real. How does your back feel? Real nice. I wish we could continue this for hours. Oh my god! <laughs> I see. 
After that, Mayuko also washed my arms and shoulders. You're being awfully nice today, Mayuko. I've been nice since before I was born. <laughs> I couldn't help but chuckle. Really? Oh, didn't you know? Half of me is made of pure, undiluted kindness. Never heard that one before. How did you find out? I got a blood test here. You can tell that from blood? Leukocytes, erythrocytes, hemoglobin, protein, and kindness. <laughs> and in your case, kindness takes up half of the whole? Yes. What's the average for a person? Unfortunately, I'm quite far above the average. I guess I'm lucky to have a nurse like you then. My god, they are flirting up a storm. <laughs> we both chuckled, and so did LHC. <laughs> Our laughs reverberated across the bathroom walls. Cold air enveloped my body as I opened the door to the dressing room. I glanced at the weight scales by the door. I passed by them, took the basket with my two new clothes on the shelf, wrapped myself in a towel, and put on my underwear. As I slid into my shirt and turned around, I saw Maya opening on her socks after wiping herself with a towel. Do you always start from the socks? Yes. That looks pretty indecent. Turns me on. Maya could probably put on her underwear and shirt. Oh my god, this is freaky! Holy shit! Mayuko, Sachiko, whatever! I feel exactly the same way. Oh my god! I always feel like he just gave my body through my feet. The same! Same! My significant other actually bought me thermal socks to wear around the house because I always complained about how cold my feet were. Oh my god, that was really sweet of them. I just... That's insane! <laughs> really? Honestly, I feel the way you think is far more indecent. Really? <laughs> oh, there is Sanai. Uh-oh, time. Time for what? I think it's time. Son, I sat up in bed and took the thermometer out of her mouth. Uh-oh. The music is sad. Oh, boy. You still seem to have a high fever. Sonai, her cheeks flushed, regarded me with an empty gaze. I want to read a book. No way. You need to get some sleep. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Sana gave me an indignant look through her half-open eyes. You really like books, don't you? Why is that? You mean, what I like about books? I nodded. I like a lot of things. I don't know if I can sum it up. Well, what's good about the current book you're reading, then? It's a normal book. No, don't you remember Void Dweller? Uh, Sanai, uh, was sick. It's old. Okay. Which means it's full of things I don't know. It's like descriptions of lands I've never seen before. But I enjoy that kind of lack, and lack of knowledge, as my imagination always fills in the blanks. If I die, burn me with the books on this shelf. Holy shit, Sana, you feeling you're feeling that bad? We need to get you to a real hospital. There is a system I haven't read yet, she added. 
I can do that if you want, but you won't be able to read them if I burn them. You think I could read books after my death? I have no idea what happens after death. You don't believe in heaven and hell, right? Now, what I figured that in the beginning, Void Dwelling, you weren't here from the beginning. The Takako world line is the future of the tips world line. Somehow. Based on the notebook that she found. I might not look it, but I'm actually scientifically minded. I don't believe you'll be able to continue constructing thoughts after your brain dies. It's fun to think about the afterlife, but none of the potential ideas make much sense from where I stand. I put the thermometer away and soak the towel I prepared in a bowl of ice water. I always start thinking about these things when I don't feel well. My health isn't exactly in tip-top shape, she added. Aren't you scared, Takako? Not really. As I said, it'd be fun if there was an afterlife, but if it all works like I, like I expect it to work, you wouldn't even be able to feel fear. So what does it matter? I'm pretty sure some people would find the idea of not existing scary in itself. What's the point of doing your best in life if you weren't to disappear anyway? I think the idea of not existing is far worse and more terrifying than any hell anyone has ever imagined. Have you never thought of it like that? Well, you leave all sorts of things behind, I mean. Besides, the fact I might disappear one day doesn't change the fact that I exist here and now. I took the towel out of the bowl and wrung it so as not to splash the water all over the room. <laughs> One time. Oh my god, Guppy Force. Holy shit. That's, that's, wow. Soul Sisters right there. I feel the same way, exactly. One time, when we were gazing at the stars together, Satoko said that their light was hundreds and hundreds of years old. In other words, hundreds of years will pass before we're seen from over there. Nothing that ever existed can disappear completely. I see. And I agree. You should sleep. I'm sure you'll be fine by tomorrow. What time is it? It's around nine, I think. Oh, there's also the idea that you might become a ghost. That just might be the most fun option. I agree. If I turn into one tonight, I'll come to your room to relax. Don't forget to make some kind of signal so I know it's you. In that case, I'll pick up coins like that ghost in town. All right, I'll make sure to leave some on the table. Yes, I can rest easy then. Good night. Yeah, good night. I really like how, what good friends she's become with Sanai. I put the cold towel on Sonai's head as she finally lay down. Sonai let out a reviled, a relieved, reviled, relieved breath and slowly closed her eyes. Okay, Takako. Time to go to the dream world. See if you can talk to Sachiko. 
I opened my eyes to realize I was lying on a bed. As I sat up, a sudden sharp pain ran through the core of my skull. With its empty shelves, a bed covered in blinding white sheets, and a window that opened to the vast sky above the port town, the room felt as lifeless as ever. The sky that was orange before I closed my eyes had turned dark blue. I rubbed my left arm that had nearly frozen while I slept with no sheet on me. When I stood up, the, the pain in my skull returned. Eventually, I staggered out of Kozue's room with uncertain steps. She was in Kozue's room. Interesting. Uh, I think I was going somewhere. I turned right and began descending the spiral staircase. The light started blinking as I continued down, went down toward the lobby. Uh, someone's saying I changed them just the other day. Let's see. I took one step after the other while leaning against the wall with my right arm. I passed by a few small pictures on the wall to reach the blinking light. It didn't seem like it had dimmed at least. As I looked away, my vision suddenly grew completely dark. Oh no. On the staircase. Oh, she's warped to the dream world. Okay, dream cave. Please meet Sachiko, please! Please, please, please. I don't want you to never see each other again. Please, please. I could feel myself stepping on a hard, wet surface. I was back in the dark limestone cave. The wall that I'd been touching had turned into rock before I knew it. I'd held a lug full of cold, humid air to calm myself down. She got back. Damn. Oh, okay. Fuck. I wonder if this is going to lead to her being able to control when she goes there. I slowly closed my eyes and opened them again. I was back on the spiral staircase. The light I changed the other day and the familiar picture of a lake hung right next to me on the wall. I lean against the wall and with my back and stared at the light for a few moments when I saw Mayako descending the stairs above me. Yeah! <laughs> I caught her hand before she tumbled back and down the stairs. Are you, are, are you going to like pull her towards you romantically? What are you doing there? Mayako asked pressing a hand against her chest. I thought there was something wrong with the light over here again, but it seems like it was just my imagination. I see. Mayako straightened herself, so I let go of her hand. It's almost lights out time. Is it already that late? Well, check in the clock in the lobby if you don't believe me. I shook my head. In that case, good night. Mayuko passed by me. Um. Mayuko turned around to face me as I addressed her. Can I sleep with you tonight? Ah. I gulped down the remainder of my cold tea and put the empty cup on the tray. I want to lay down the futons, so I'd appreciate it if you got out of the way. I stood up and continued to the kitchen with tray in hand. Meanwhile, Mayoko folded the table and prepared two futons behind me.
after I lay down on the freshly laid futon. Mayako draws a sheet on me. I'm turning off the lights. Okay. Sure you won't need to go to the toilet. <laughs> These conversations. Jeez. How old do you think I am? I partially peeked out from under the sheet to glare at her. Mayuka made a low chuckle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, I'm turning off the lights. Okay. The room momentarily turned orange and was swallowed by darkness as she pulled the cord. The night duty rooms were kept in, futons were kept in the closet, so they had a different smell compared to my bed. My brain had irrevocably connected that smell to Mayuka by now. I yawned and considered the cord dangling from the ceiling. It looked like it was swaying, but when I looked at it in relation to the ceiling, I understood that wasn't the case. I had a lot on my mind, so I didn't feel sleepy at all. Um, are you sleeping? I asked in a barely audible voice. I'm not. Mayuka gave in, gave in after a long pause. What would you do if I disappeared? I rolled over to face her. Are you planning to leave? She asked, slightly raising her upper body. No, I'm speaking hypothetically. As in, you found my room empty once you went looking for me in the morning. And I wasn't anywhere else in the sanatorium. What would you do then? With no word from you? With no word from me, yes. She's thinking if she can get to Satoko. I'd look for you. I'd contact the police and we'd scour the mountains, I suppose. And then you'd get a piece of my mind once we found you. I see. Why ask me something like that, though? I just felt like it. <sighs> Mayako let out a sigh. Okay, well... No more of these questions, please. They're only going to make me depressed. Okay. I'll make sure to leave a message if I go anywhere. Oh, wow. She's not going to... Damn. Please do. At times, however, you could not be the master of your own fate. Are you sure you can make that promise so easily? Well, fine. I'll do it as long as it's within my power. Thank you. But I'm not sure if I'll be strong enough. Would you please make up your mind? <laughs> it's like you said, sometimes you just don't have a choice. I suppose so. I rolled on my back and closed my eyes. The light clouds beyond the window looked like smoke in the moonlight. I remember staying over at my grandma's this one time. My grandparents and I all slept together in the same room. I rubbed my eyes in the middle of the night and got an eyelash stuck in it. I used the mirror above my head to try and get it out. Damn, I usually just rub my eye until it comes out when that happens. That's got to suck. Glancing at Mayuko, I saw her looking at me through drowsy, half-open eyes. It was the kind of mirror you could turn in various angles, but it was set up to face the closet for some reason. Anyway, 
I turned it towards myself and then my grandma woke up and got really angry at me for doing that. Why was she angry? I don't know. You didn't ask? I was too scared to. I see. What do you think? Was that a scary story? <laughs> Takako! I wouldn't say it was particularly scary. Really? It's true, though. Look, I got goosebumps from just remembering it. Then you should have described your grandma better. How mad she was. Maybe you have, maybe you'll have to have been there to understand. Didn't you think that there might be something weird reflected in that mirror? Or that it led to some other dimension and you wouldn't be able to return? That's a popular story about mirrors, yes. Hey! Don't just brush it off like that! The whole thing traumatized me for life! I see. She was scared at the fact that her grandmother was angry that there was something dangerous about the mirror. I'm not sure I can help you with that one. The grandfather clock in the lobby, lobby struck the hour. It stopped after 11 beats. Okay, it's only 11 then, I see. It's late. We should get to sleep. Good night. Good night. I stole a glance of Mayako's face before closing my eyes. I think continue thinking about things in the darkness of my closed eyelids. It was a bad habit that would occasionally interfere with my sleep schedule. Oh, here we go. I wriggled out of my futon and got into Mayoko's. What are you doing? I got too scared to sleep. Is that so? <sighs> Mayako let out a sigh. Oh God, thank you, thank you, thank you for another vacation. Oh God, seeing them together is just the best. I just want them to be together, please. I just want them to be together. Just look at it, Sachi. Do you think that it's great? I look back over my shoulder while ascending the stairs. There was a small garden surrounded by four walls outside the window. It had some flower beds and a square hole in the middle that looked like a well. How do you even enter that? Sachiko asked. I think I can see doors on that wall. He looks quite tranquil. I like it. How many of the rooms are occupied? Most of them are, I think. There's a handicraft shop on the first floor, a tax accountant's office below us, and a law firm up above. <sighs> we reached our destination. I open the door and let Sajiko go inside. I followed her and closed the door behind me. What do you think? Sajiko carefully surveyed the room. <sighs> we can put the employee desks here, and you can have a private desk there by the. Oh, we can put the employee desks here, and you can have a private desk by the, there by the window, since you're the boss and everything. Sachiko walked to the window and looked outside. It's too bright here. Too much reflection to read papers. And it feels kind of hot. Good thing it's not facing south at least. She added. Well, you can put up blinds or something. I pointed at the left side of the room. There's a kitchen over there, so we could have coffee whenever we wanted. 
And this other room would be perfect for meeting clients. Satoko turned away from the window and peeked inside the kitchen, then continued to the meeting room. Oh. I see you can enter this room from the, from the corridor, too. There's a small entrance by the staircase leading here. I see. I saw another door at the end of the corridor. What was that? Just a storage room, I think. Oh. It's close to the station as it has a parking lot. With the shopping street close by, we can even eat out for lunch. Oh, yeah, and I found a cafe I think you'd like. What do you think? I say this is the best one out of all the ones we've checked today. How much is it? It's pretty cheap. I took a thick stack of documents out of my bag and handed Sotico one page from it. <sighs> what do you think? <laughs> Are you sure there hasn't been a murder in this building or something like that? It's just old! Well, I imagine all sorts of things must have happened here over the years, but does that really matter to us? Satoko to continue silently facing back and forth between the empty rooms. I do, Void Dweller. I do. <laughs> she tried knocking on some of the walls, listening to the resulting echo. After checking the storage room, we looked around to see what kind of establishments occupied the other floors. It was in the middle of a weekday, though, so everyone was busy working inside. If you want to learn more about the others, I have a file here. I think we can check your papers in that cafe you mentioned. That's a good idea! We went to the cafe. Woo! Oh, I the where she met Narasaki. Once there, we looked over the rest of the papers we had. Zatika paid the most attention to the building's design, both exterior and interior, as well as its expenses. I was more swayed by the ease of transport in the nearby stores. Now here's where I'm gonna agree more with Takako. Okay, Ju Chan. Have a good night. Thank you so much for coming. We looked over a couple of other places after that, but I didn't didn't find anything better. It wasn't perfect, but it met all our primary requirements. That's hilarious, boy dweller. <laughs> it was dark by the time we returned home. Can, can we just have more of this? Just like more of them just living their lives and everything like this. Oh God. We had dinner downtown on our way back, so I went to take a bath right away. As I returned, I spotted Satoko having a conversation on the phone in the living room. I sat down on the sofa and picked up the remote control. However, I saw Satoko shaking her head from the corner of my eye. I placed the remote control back and instead picked up the travel pamphlet from the table. Eventually, Satoko finished her phone call and came over to me. She looked down at me, sitting in the middle of a two-seater sofa. I returned her look and patted my knees. Her eyes narrowed. Oh, what's, go what's going on? Feast your eyes upon the ultra-deluxe Takako sofa! Sachiko finally gave up and sat down in between my legs. Oh my god. Oh my god. What was 
that phone call about? He was head of the sales department from our old place. He called to tell me about our retirement bonus. Will it include paid vacation time? It won't. Damn. And I worked so hard, too. Thanks to that, we won't be running out of money anytime soon. But we've got taxes next year, right? I wonder if it's going to be okay. I've already calculated that. It's going to be okay. Well, if you'd worked a little harder, we, we'd have more leeway. Well, if you had worked a little harder, we'd have more leeway, though. Hey, no! Any more of that engineering department would have killed me. But the blame lies with sales and not engineering, right? Their manager accepted project with no regards to the already packed schedules of the staff. That sucked too. But the worst part was how our manager decided we didn't need weekends anymore and made insane overtime part of the daily routine on top of all that. I can't believe that's not illegal. But you got paid, didn't you? It allowed us to advance with our plan ahead of schedule. It was just like she said. Our goals were to go independent and travel around the world. And they did that too. And we managed to achieve both, both a few years earlier than expected. Oh God. With the future looking bright, our past hurdles felt like a pleasant memory. Oh God, oh God, please. I just want them to be together in the end. Please, please, please. Please, <laughs> please. God. Oh wait, you're right, Takako's hand. <laughs> I had more strength into my embrace and hug Sachiko tighter from behind. Have you decided where you want to go yet? Oh, have you decided where you want to go yet? <sighs> Sachiko considered the pamphlet we got from the tourism agency. I thought about it, but I feel that your suggestion about going to the sea somewhere in far, far in the south sounds like the best option so far. It's summer over there right now, isn't it? I've wanted to experience that at least once. Right? And speaking of new experiences, you can't fire guns or go skydiving in here, so there's that too. I'll leave through the pamphlet from behind. <sighs> that doesn't sound too bad. We spent some time talking about travel, imagining skies and seas that we'd never be able to see from our native land. Satoko turned on the TV after we finished, and turned on me before we finished. She flipped through a few channels until we were on the evening news. The announcer was talking about the economy or something. Looks like our economy is doing well. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. Some businessmen were being interviewed on the screen right now. What kind of office do you want to run? Sajiko asked. A place where we can all talk about the future! Oh god! <laughs> Oh, God! Please, I just want them to be together in the end. Please, please, please. Oh, God. That doesn't sound too bad. Sajiko said after a brief pause. I realized it was a dream as soon as I opened my eyes. I glanced at the clock in the dimly lit room. It was six o'clock in the morning. Mayuko was sleeping next to me in silence. 
I was thinking with my eyes closed before falling asleep. So I wasn't sure how long I'd been out for. I still felt kind of sleepy. Oh, this is a new song. It was too early to wake up. I closed my eyes again. The contents of my dream naturally flushed through my mind's eye again. I realized what I had lost after finishing reading that diary. The past me never worried about things like this. I was able to deal with everything a lot better than I could now. This almost sounds like a septet for the dead princess, but in a, in a very slow version. I mean, not that one, but um, you went on with her. Of it, it sounds like what? It's one of the two. No, 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 wait, no, neither of those. It's Beloved Tomboyish Daughter. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that one. Sorry, jeez. It sounds a bit like a, a sad, like, slow piano version of Cyrano's theme. <sighs> That's what it sounds like. Three songs all from the same game. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that Sachiko had my back even if I screwed up. It never felt like that big of a deal for me to leave my hometown. It didn't bother me to give up on my job. Similarly, I didn't worry too much about the feasibility of us establishing our new office. I just drew what I wanted to, and Sachiko would color it for me. Oh god. It was all so easy. A lot of things become easy when you share them with someone you trust. I thought about Maiko, who is now on the other side of my eyelids. I had no words to express just how much happier my life would have been if Sachiko hadn't vanished from it. You can get it back! Please! 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 If only Mayuko was Sachiko. But I love Mayuko for who she was too. If I was her, I wouldn't want someone to love me because I look like someone else. It was either Mayuko or Sachiko lying beside me, and there was no in between. You've got to remember what's going on! I considered if I had any tools to confirm it. I couldn't find anything, no matter which times I read through the notebook. All I had was that image of Sachiko in the dark cave. I felt like that place held all the answers. I had to go to that room one more time. Just the thought of it made my blood run cold. This is it. Final dungeon here. Go get your fucking wife. Come on. Oh, God. I had no guarantees I'd be able, to be able to make it back this time. This is it, isn't it? She's gonna leave this world. Be just like the other people with the memory disease. Labyrinth, chapter eight, the sea and the old anchored ship. And we're back to Narasaki. Okay, guys. I think this is a good spot to stop for today. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think this is a good spot to stop for today. And, uh... Damn, things are getting so intense. Oh, wow. You really think it's going to be three streams more, Guppy Force? This is getting intense as fuck. I can't believe... Oh my god, I'm really excited for the climax. I just want them to be together. I just want them to be together in the end so badly. Oh god. 
I really hope Narasaki is good. And that she's trying to help them get back with each other. In the same world. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Tomorrow we have some more turnabout of the Golden Witch. And uh, the day after we'll be continue. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Wait, no, tomorrow's... Yeah, tomorrow's some more turnabout of the Golden Witch. And uh, Thursday uh, we'll be uh, continuing this. So if Guppy Force is right, and she usually is... This will be the last uh, long break until uh, the last few streams of Seabed. Uh, after Seabed will be Ever 17. Uh, which is uh, something I can't wait to... Something I really can't wait to play too. But I'm going to miss this so much. Oh god. I just want them to be together so badly. Yeah, Ever 17 should be a nice change of pace. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the stories we've had have been quite similar lately. So yeah, that should be a nice change of pace. Like, I, I didn't even know what the stories were like going in, so it just kind of happened that way. So until next time, you guys, I will say so long, farewell, have we to say good night. Y'all are the sweetest of hearts. See ya. <laughs>